Hi, Dr. Garima here again, and uh, we are solving another dental question related to Australian Dental Council exam. And I hope you all, all are doing well. And uh, wow, it's already December uh, for the March opening candidates, like four months to go. I mean, it just feels like the September exam finished and uh, the March exam is just like three months away and it's already December. Like November was a very, very hectic month for me. And the last couple of three days were just crazy. Uh, so anyways, this is life. It goes on. Grateful and thankful. Uh, grateful to be part of your journeys. Like daily, I communicate at least with five students, new ones. Uh, who are getting enrolled or have questions or just want to share uh, like how to study and a couple of part two candidates have also messaged me recently asking me to provide a study plan after shooting this video I'll be doing that so anyways uh, let's not talk too much and jump onto the questions directly now this question is uh, very important and uh, why because it's covering a lot of questions a lot of lateral questions that can be asked in your exams like from this question a lot of lateral questions can sprout up on the same topic plus uh, this question is also important as you will encounter this type of scenario a lot in your clinical practice like like any family that's coming to you for example even if a uh, man is coming he'll say oh my wife has this or wife will say my children or one of my relatives has this you know anything like somebody in the family will definitely have this you know and they'll talk about it and that's how uh, you're going to diagnose more and help people out more so learn to understand the scenario and you will relate with yourself very often when you'll see uh, such a patient next time if you're a clinician if you're a freshly passed out graduate then you will encounter the scenario a lot more than you can think of okay so let's start a 24 year old man who works in at a bricklayer it should be uh comes to your clinic to get his third molar extracted as advised by his gp okay so in australia um, all the patients have to go through GP uh, before they are directed to the specialist or in dentistry you are the GP and you will be directing to the specialist there is no direct booking appointments with the specialist unless uh, referred by the GP that's how the practice is unlike, unlike in Asian countries uh, where you can just google up a specialist and directly book an appointment so your intraoral examination reveals a partially erupted lower left third molar okay partially erupted the tooth is carious and his oral hygiene is fair the, as you can see in the picture see all these pictures are approximate similar pictures to what in the exam is given uh, but the exam pictures are never released out so you never have the exact picture but looking at this picture which was somewhat similar to what was asked in the exam you can see that the tooth is like twisted it's, it's like sleeping a bit and uh, it's it's not fully erupted it's partially erupted that even the question mentions and because it's partially erupted uh, it becomes really difficult to clean distally to the second molar causing food lodgement and thereby development of caries and even if you fix this tooth somehow the caries would still develop because that area is so difficult to clean so this is your question now let's see what are the sub questions if this patient has severe gag reflex, what radiograph type would be suitable? Severe gag reflex, that means uh, the more you go posteriorly in the oral cavity, the more the patient is going to gag. So so what are you going to do? You Can you take a periopical that would induce severe, severe gagging? The patient won't let you put the phlegm itself. What are your options? Bitewing periopical out of question. Bitewing is not going to help you because it won't take the periopical status and you need the periopical status. Periopical you cannot take because of the gag reflex. So you are left with either CT, OPG, that's it. CT scan is an expensive radiograph. Not every clinic is equipped with the CT scan machine. It has a lot more radiation and it has to be taken only when absolute necessary 
and plus CT scan image is usually limited to the area where you want to take it usually does not give the full mouth unless you shoot for a full mouth CT now always the golden rule is go with the minimum and then go to the maximum you should not directly jump to a maximum thing like it's just consider you want to go to a shop which is below your home you would just walk and go you're not gonna call a limousine and a driver and go there right because you'll do the basic things first and then opt for major things which are more expensive and only when indicated so the answer directly is opg because there you don't have to insert anything inside the mouth the x-ray comes from the outside but you still get a full picture plus for extraction you need the surrounding areas more than a very specific periapical area so no doubt periapical x-ray is important but if the patient is having severe gag reflex then you cannot force it then you just have to go with opg if opg wasn't the option given here i'll go with city scan but please do not jump directly to city scan don't solve these questions as if you're solving it on pen and paper on you know like as if this is a question just black and white solve this as if you're a clinician you're sitting in your clinic and somebody has given this scenario and this question is basically the patient sitting in front of you then you will think with your clinical brain don't think with your academical brain you know differentiate uh what is the most important most important most keyword if you have seen my videos you understand why i'm hitting on the word most because when most comes it means all the options given would be important but i have to choose the most important and common indication common indication not a rare indication the word common is the most important keyword out here for wisdom tooth removal uh, just yesterday only one of my candidates asked me this question and she said i'm confused between option a and b and i was like why <laughs> So she was like, uh, "Won't facial swelling around the third molars be an indication?" No, facial swelling is rare, first of all, and you have to find the cause of facial swelling. It can be due to various other things. It need not be due to the impaction of the third molar. It can be due to, say, a second molar getting infected or whatever. You directly don't jump to facial swelling. always the first thing is the patient will complain recurrent pericoronitis pericoronitis of more than 3 or 4 times in a year limited mouth opening causing severe trismus that is a sure shot indication of extraction of third molars because you cannot have recurrent pericoronitis you cannot have antibiotics again and again facial swelling on the other hand first of all see you have to understand that it's the third molars the bottom ones which are usually the problem not the top ones So in the bottom ones, uh, this area that's the submandibular, retromandibular, pterygomandibular spaces they get infected. Facial spaces are are out here. They they won't get infected directly with the third molars. It's the pterygomandibular space, and if that happens, that's a more severe form. Of course, you have to extract. But do you see like many patients having such? bad pericomandibular infections all the time no you'll have patients who will have bad pericoronitis all the time so that's the common thing not a rare thing so if the question would have asked which is a rare thing uh, which can be life threatening which indicates third molar extraction sure i'll use option b but when it says the most important and the most common indication for the wisdom teeth removal i'll straight away go with recurrent pericoronitis with persistent infection irreversible pulpitis of third molar uh, is due to caries and um, not always uh, that's an indication sometimes these teeth are absolutely straight lot of space it's just caries and you can do an rct so that's not a common indication crowding of lower anterior teeth uh, well it's recommended by orthodontist to extract but again that's not a common indication and you can choose not to extract you can choose to do ipr and straighten them out prophylactic removal before radiotherapy oh wow so why just third molars <laughs> it can be any molar right no the answer is a which type of extraction is most difficult to deal with which means what all the options given are difficult but i have to choose the most difficult mesoangular distoangular vertical partial impaction and bony impaction 
the thing is that you may be confused with bony impaction thinking wow like it's fully covered in the bone so it can be very difficult but what if it's fully covered in the bone but absolutely in a vertical position like this then probably you can access it and just extract it but in the books the distal angular which is like this is deemed as the most difficult one to extract because of its angulation because the crown is like facing behind and you ne need to like remove a lot more portion of bone than the other types of impaction that you have to remove and destroy a lot of bone of the jaw hence just to angular is so far considered the most uh, terrible and difficult type of extraction but then again uh, the mesoangular or I would say the sleeping position of the tooth you must have seen and some people is just sleeping you know and the oral surgeon is like you better not touch this tooth it's so close to the nerve there is no space now what to do so unless it really gives you a problem you just leave it as it is so yeah I mean there are there are a lot of factors which goes into determining the extent of difficulty in extraction of the third molars even a vertical tooth can be difficult if the root is long and it's just on top of the inferior alveolar nerve right so the skill of the oral surgeon uh, the diagnostic methods uh, these two determine how successful your extraction can be so that you don't end up with any complications later on they're horrible third molar extractions you know complicated ones but anyways you have to do it you have to do it Regarding antibiotics after extractions, it must be prescribed. Okay, now this question has been confusing to a lot of people. Because in therapeutic guidelines, it's clearly mentioned that uh, post-operatively antibiotics after extraction, basically post-operatively, that's after the procedure should not be given, okay? Uh, and yet in this question, I have chosen the answer as in patients at risk of infective antibiotics. See. It's not wrong to choose option E, which is none of the above, if you are like hardcore following therapeutic guidelines. But in this question, it's not mentioned that in patients of infective endocarditis, antibiotics was prescribed preoperatively. So assuming there is no uh, antibiotics prescribed preoperatively and you're doing an extraction, then you have to prescribe antibiotics postoperatively in patients at risk of infective endocarditis. Option A is straight away wrong, option B uh, no, option C is yes, option D in patients liable to excessive bleeding then you would be taking the clotting factor uh, measurements and uh, you will have anti-thrombotic agents with you uh, and thrombotic agents with you, sorry not anti, you will have thrombotic agents with you. Antibiotic is not going to counter your excessive bleeding. That's a complete different thing altogether. So, uh, in patients at risk of infective endocarditis is what I'll go with. But if you really think, no, I want to follow therapeutic guidelines. It says that uh, post-operatively you should not be given antibiotics. But then you have to be very sure shot that... Uh, the scenario is very clear that preoperatively in at risk of infective endocarditis patients uh, the antibiotic was given if you're not sure then go with option c if you're very sure then go with option e you know so uh, whenever i say that two options can be correct uh, it can be one of those unmarked questions for all the new candidates who are watching this video what are unmarked questions well in australian council the dental council exam out of 280 questions there are 40 unmarked questions meaning that no matter which answer you choose that question's marking will not be counted so though you are solving 280 questions you wouldn't know which 40 questions uh, will not be considered as marked that is basically you are being judged for 240 questions only but of course you have to solve all of them so in the in those 40 questions two answers can be correct i do not understand the logic behind this but this is what it is so go with it so uh whenever you have such a question where you sure short feel that two answers can be correct do not break your head too much about it probably it's an unmarked question just mark whichever your instinct goes through and move on because the rest 240 questions 240 questions you have one sure short answer okay <laughs> don't mess around with that because that those are the questions which will determine your passing or failing 
not the unmarked questions so there is no point breaking your head over the unmarked questions now while performing an extraction you you as a dentist experienced an injury with an elevator what would be your immediate course of action how many of you guys have experienced injury with instruments i have experienced uh, needle injuries needle stick injuries which is out of my own this thing uh, because sometimes the patient is so uncooperative that no matter how much careful i am while giving the inferior alveolar block i poke myself because my one finger is just retracting the cheek and my other is here about to inject and the patient just suddenly moves and bam it's it's directly in my this thing uh but otherwise pretty much touch wood uh, with any instrument i have not encountered yeah a couple of times i have <laughs> injured with myself with a probe you know while opening those um, sterilized pouches i am very bad at that i i try to open sometimes when it doesn't i just try to break open it and in that scenario the curved portion of that explorer just bam goes through my thumb or finger and i'm like out 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 <laughs> So I've been very careful, but yeah, I can count a handful of times in my entire uh, yeah a decade of career <laughs> of practice, like not counting the years when I was in uh, post graduation and graduation. It's after that uh, that I have been injured by this. But with uh, actual uh, operating instruments like elevators or air rotors, nah, touch wood. that that i have been very careful but in case you were to injure yourself what would you do and that's the question call hospital services get an anti tetanus shot get an anti tetanus shot and scrub with alcohol or chlorhexidine encourage bleeding at the site of injury and wash with soap and water and scrub it encourage bleeding at the site of the injury and wash with soap and water without scrubbing it option is e you don't scrub scrubbing is you spreading that thing in the surrounding tissues you just hold your finger below the water uh, you probably apply a little soap and you just let it bleed 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 until it stops by itself after that probably you can go to hospital services or get a tetanus shot whatever you deem appropriate but at the immediate moment you have to let it wash away that is what you are going to do in any any injury be it with a normal patient be it with an hiv patient be it with any patient first of all you should treat all patients as if they have hiv that is a level of precaution you should take because you never know the patient might not know you never know so treat treat all the patients with utmost utmost care uh so yeah so many such questions can be asked regarding injuries regarding infection control or regarding third molars third molars will definitely be asked they are so common you know like every month at least four or five third molars will come to you just like that as a walk in or just my molars hurting or my orthodontist has asked me to extract you know the third molars like next after root canals i think they are the bread butter of dentistry <laughs> so uh share your experiences of injuries while occupational hazards you know apart from back pain and neck pain that's another type of injuries we endure through uh, but yeah this is like invasive pokey injuries uh share your experiences in this video comment and for all the new candidates uh welcome to the <laughs> exam preparation uh you can find all the books uh in target adc file section it's on facebook uh you give your uh, details and i'll uh give you permission to be in the group and then you can access it otherwise have a nice day guys bye bye